Hey, what's up guys? This is Clint Lash, and for today's video, uh, what we're going to be talking about here is handling 3-betting. Uh, meaning, we're going to be in situations where we open up with a hand and somebody 3-bets us. And I wanted to create this video, and I'm actually going to create multiple parts because it's actually, as I was going through and creating the content, it's actually pretty extensive. Um, this seems to be the popular consensus in terms of when I'm asking around, asking different players, players in my Skype group, players I'm staking, coaching, you know, what type of information they they want to see, um, you know, in these videos. They they want to see three betting situations, and one of the reasons is, is because essentially of the sit and go series that I made. Um, you know, for those that have seen the Sit and Go series, and for those that haven't, please go and watch that five-part series that I did. It essentially provides the foundation for a lot of the videos that I've created. Um, but in that series, you know, people have been using these strategies uh, for the past year or so. Um, you know, it talks a lot about being aggressive. Um, you know, so. You know, as you see here, you know, I, I in that series I promoted you know an aggressive strategy of exploiting players, especially the regs, and we can do that by opening wide in many situations. Uh, for example, if you have two, three, four regs to your left, we know that they're simply not going to be calling raises um, as you approach the big blind 100, 200 level and on. Uh, they're typically going to be three betting or folding. So accordingly. Uh, because they're going to be three betting or folding, we can open really wide because we're not going to play post flop. Well, as you start to incorporate a strategy like this, and even the strategies from the uh, from the rest of the videos, naturally you're going to become more aggressive, playing more hands. Now, what that does is it actually increases your overall HUD stats. Obviously, for example, my stats you know, before I started using these strategies, I was your typical nitty 14-12 player. Um, I started using these these stats, and now I'm playing like a 22-18, 22-19 type of game. Well, for anybody that's paying attention, obviously they're going to see that your stats are going up, or just quite simply that your stats are more aggressive than your your average reg. So accordingly, you know, and, and I know when I, if I start seeing players that have uh, wide opening ranges from different positions, um, I'm more likely to three bet them. So the common concern that I'm hearing now is, well, what happens when regs potentially pick up on this strategy and start three betting wider? How do we deal with that? And those are the questions that uh, you know we're going to look to answer here. So here are the questions that I'm typically posed with uh, from my students in regards to how to deal with these three bets. So they understand the strategy. Um, you know, so if you understand why we're opening wide, that's all well and good. Everybody gets it. But do we need to deviate from that now? Um, so should we still continue to open wide through these regs if they become more aggressive? Or should we actually tighten up our opening ranges? Um, and accordingly, what should our, our three bet calling range be? And, and that's usually where the concern lies. Uh, when you're opening up, with a certain hand, or, or when players approach me, they say, you know, should I continue to open wide through these players, or should I just simply tighten up? The answer is actually both, and we'll, we'll get into that. Um, I'd say in a perfect world, I mean, I'll answer this question right now, in a perfect world, it would be nice to continue to open wide and have a perfect exploitable, um, you know, or you're exploiting their three-bet calling range. Um, so let me let me take a step back and clarify that. If you're going to continue to open and they're court and they're going to be three betting wider, in a perfect world you want to have the perfect th uh, calling range against that three betting range. So you might need to widen your three betting range, um, or you, sorry, you might need to widen your calling range versus their more aggressive three betting. Um, that's typically the tougher thing to do because if you're typically going along and you have your basic range that you're calling all ins with, it can be really difficult to widen that range because you feel like you're doing something wrong by calling too wide. And quite simply, you might be. And, and we're going to get into a hand history that, that'll show different ranges and how wide you can actually get, especially in ICM scenarios. So we'll get into that. Um, another big question, which I think is an overlooked aspect, is 
dealing with Annie's. Annie's play a big role. We'll, we'll get into again um, how how big of a role they actually play in determining when you should be opening and when you shouldn't be. Um, and what type of ranges should we be calling with? I, I mentioned that earlier, but you know we need to nail down ranges. Um, you know, assigning ranges to your opponents is a di very difficult thing to do, but that's where it all begins and I'll go through some tips in terms of how to identify what your opponent's three betting range is. So let's get to the main question. If you're opening and you look to your left and you see that there is a reg who you have identified as an aggressive player, should you then continue to open wide? Um, that, that'll be the main question that we pose and we'll use these next couple uh, slides here to um, look at all the different considerations we need to make. So the concern as I said is is that any two card open strategy um, is it still going to work and people you know a lot of players a lot of really good players that I've been working with have actually become a bit paranoid with players three betting them. Um, so one thing I'll say is it's a definitely a valid concern. I mean, you obviously want to be concerned with what players to your left are going to do, how they're going to react. When it comes to three betting, I think players get a little bit over paranoid and they exaggerate how much they're getting three bet because I think they see their cards and they see, oh, I'm going to open with five deuce off here. And then they get three bet by a reg and they figure, oh, well, you know, they must know I'm opening wide. I, I can't open with this anymore. Guys, players don't know what you have, obviously, unless you sh you show them. Um, so that's why I always say it, it's a bit over-exaggerated, I think, in terms of how often people feel that they're being 3-bet. But regardless of that, um, let's just say that you are. I mean, for the purposes of this video, let's just say you are getting 3-bet a lot. Um, we'll talk about how to handle that. So, But I, I also want you to remember that when using the strategies, especially from... Um, the second part of the Zingo series where I talk about you know using the stats to open wide from any position at the table. Remember what I said in that. For players to truly exploit you, they need to three bet wide, but also three bet you often. You know, who cares if a guy one time decides to, you know, three bet you ultra ultra wide, maybe with any two cards. Okay, maybe you don't know that, maybe you do, whatever. But let's just say we know exactly that this time a guy three bet you with any two cards to exploit you. Well, if he doesn't continue to do that, then he's actually not exploiting you. Okay, maybe that one time he did, but that doesn't mean you need to stop. Um, so that's another thing to to be uh, to kind of take note of as you're playing um, is how often are they three betting you? And, and I'll mention this later on, but. Um, That'll be another thing, guys. If you want to take a look at three betting scenarios um, where you're concerned about players or, th or three betting you, take notes. HUD stats will be helpful, but nothing's better than having hard notes right in front of you saying, you know, I, I saw this guy show down against me, you know, nine ten offsuit or something like that, or you know, if, if in a particular game a guy has three bet you three or four times in a row. Something like that. It's nice to have a note there with your HUD stats. Um, you know, I used to take notes all the time, even before using a HUD, and I, I still take notes. Um, you know, if you're using NoteCaddy, th that's a great uh, program. You know, I personally don't use it, but I know a lot of people that do, and they love it. So note NoteCaddy can also help. But um, note-taking will be extremely important, because whenever you're dealing with three-betting, um, I'm, also, I'm often asked the question, you know, what, sh what should I be calling with here? Well, that's not the first question you should be asking uh, when you're dealing with a 3-bet. The first question you should be asking is, what range are they 3-betting you with? Then we can start discussing calling ranges. So, we'll, uh, we'll get into that, like I said. So, I also want to bring up a, a scenario, um, or just a question about... When do three? When do players actually three bet? Um, now I know they three bet at any position, but when do the regs? And that's typically who we're dealing with, guys. When we're throughout this video, we're going to be talking about the aggressive regs, not just aggressive players in general, because you have random players that can do all sorts of stuff. 
for the purposes of, of this video, we're going to be talking about, as it pertains to the sit and go series I did, and the part two specifically, where I said when you have regs to your left, you can open up with any two cards in certain spots. So that's the situation we're dealing with. Um, so the question is, when are these regs going to be three betting you? Typically, they're going to be three betting you. Um, or where they deviate from one another. I mean, most regs have a very similar three betting range. You know, if I open from under the gun and a reg is in middle position at a full nine man table, um, I don't really need stats to determine that that reg's three betting range is most likely a pretty tight one because I'm opening under the gun. He's probably got players to his left. Um, it's not really an exploitable spot. You know, his three betting range might be pocket tens and ace queen or ace king, and that'd be about it. Uh, maybe there's an extra hand in there, but it's not going to deviate too much from that, especially even when you, from you, when you open from middle position. Where regs start to deviate and, and change their game versus other regs, you know, they, they all might have very similar stats, playing 16, 14, 14, 12, whatever, but where they start to uh, change up a little bit is how they defend versus a steal. You know, maybe when they're on the button, small or definitely in the blind, small blind, big blind, and you're opening up from your standard stealing spots, the cutoff and the uh, and the button, and obviously the the small blind as well if they're in the big blind. So that's when you know that's what every book says that that's where you're supposed to be opening wide, and obviously we that, that's what we know we should be doing, and accordingly. Regs are looking at that and saying, I know that this player is, is opening here wide, so I can 3-bet wide. And that's these are the situations you need to be careful of. To be honest, like I said, I'm not too concerned still about opening from middle position and opening from early, uh, or from early position or under the gun, like I talked about in Part 2 of the Sit and Go series, and that we can still do that very profitably. So I'm not really concerned about getting 3-bet too wide from those positions. If you notice that somebody is, obviously take a note. But I think that's going to be a much, much more of a rare occurrence than this one. I think this is a much more common occurrence and a valid concern is that when you're opening from your standard stealing spot of, let's say, the button, um, there's a good chance that you might find a pretty aggressive reg to your left that doesn't like you opening from the button and, and wants to 3-bet you. So, what do you want to look for um, is at least a 10% 3-bet versus steal stat. Um, typically, if you look at 3-bet versus steal, and that's one of the stats that I have in my HUD, um, if it's 10% or more over a, a significant sample, that significant sample is subjective, but let's just say yeah, um, you look, and don't look at total number of hands. Like when I say over a significant sample, I mean significant sample of opportunities in which they had a chance to 3-bet. And you can see that in your pop-up. If you roll over the pop-up in your HUD, um, you know I have just a general three bet versus steel stat, but when I roll over it, it breaks it down into um, small blind and big blind, and then right next to it in parentheses, it'll give you the number of opportunities. So when I say 10% versus steel stat, and I roll over it, I don't want to see 10 opportunities. That's just one in 10 times. That's not significant. But if I see 100 opportunities, that then we start getting significant. Or even if you have less. But let's say the player is playing 18, 16, and a 60% um, fold versus steal, and a 10% three bet versus steal. Even over, if it's not a huge sample, all those stats put together gives you an idea that that player might be more aggressive. Um, so th those are the players that, when you look to your left, you might be concerned about. So, so that's the first thing. Identify those players first, um, and know that hey, this might be an aggressive opponent. Um, if you want even more precise stats, now I'm still using Hold a Manager 1. I still like it. I think it's more user friendly than Hold a Manager 2. Um, but the one thing that I really like about Hold a Manager 2 that 1 does not have is the 3 bet versus hero stat. And this is what I'm recommending to a lot of players who, who've approached me a little bit paranoid about the 3 betting. I say, quite, quite simply, you know, if you have Hold a Manager 1, upgrade to 2. If you don't have to, just, just simply get it. Um, I don't think that Poker Tracker has it. If they do, then I apologize. I, I, I don't use it. But I've talked to others, and I don't think that there is a versus hero stat. Um, but as I said, Hold'em Magic 2 has a 3-bet versus hero. So you can get specific, you know, real specific in terms of 
if you're playing against you know the same reg every single day and you've got thousands of hands on them, well, you can now break it down and and see are they three betting you more than their general three betting statistics? That'll give you a great idea in terms of uh, whether they're exploiting you or not. Um, so I definitely recommend you now, even if you are using Hold'em Manager two and not using that stat, I would use that stat. So I want to get into an example hand, and when we get into this example hand, I'm going to be using Card Runners EV um, to go through some scenarios, and I'm going to be jumping around a little, a little bit, and just showing some ranges. And and in this uh, this specific example, what I'm going to take is a, and I'll, I'll just pull it up now and discuss it. Um, this is going to be a nine man game, standard nine man game. Um, and one thing I'll say about this, I know this is nine man. I know not everybody everybody's playing nine man games. The ICM considerations with a nine man are actually going to be similar to the final table of an eighteen man. Uh, ranges are obviously going to be a little bit different, but um, give or take, it's going to be relatively similar considerations. Um, similar considerations as well. I mean, if you're dealing with a final table of a forty-five man, you're dealing with some major ICM considerations. Typically, though, you're not going to be deep enough to be raising. It's most likely push fold mode at that point. Um, and in 180 mans, you're typically dealing with more chip EV, um, you know, except the final table, you've got a little bit of ICM. But um, for the most part, in this specific example, and I said this is part one, in part two I am going to get into different game considerations, um, and specifically get into chip EV, but for today's purposes, I just want to take some standard, um, some standard spots, nine man game, and, and here's the setup. Um, We've got six players. Um, three are inactive, so they fold it. It's going to be folded to us on the button. So you see here, I got the button, small blind, and big blind active. We're going to be on the button with a um, with a twelve and a half big blind stack. And let me show you that. Um, so we're at one hundred, two hundred with a uh, a twenty five ante. So we've got one hundred fifty chips as well in there so we have a 2500 stack at big blind 200 on the button versus two other stacks in the blinds that have the same exact stack size so what we'll be able to do here is take a look at um, the small blind and big blind give them three betting ranges see what our calling ranges should be based upon the, their three betting ranges and quite simply let's just see if you know what's that break even point to where there, it, it just prevents you from opening up really wide. Um, so there'll be a couple things that we take a look at. So let's just take a look at. You know, we're going to open up with any two cards here, so you can see any two cards. Um, I just set it to random. All hands. We're going to min raise to 400. Now let's give a three betting range here to our small blind. This is you know with about a 23 percent range. Um, this isn't overly aggressive, and it's obviously not tight. So let's just go with this for right now, and then we'll we'll adjust that. So right now I just have it set to suited aces, any pocket pairs, broadways, and ace six off. Okay. I made the big blind. I'll just say the small blind's a little bit more aggressive than the big blind. In the big blind we gave a tighter range. So ace eight off, ace five suited, some broadway hands, pocket pairs. So 16% range, and. I gave myself a random calling range. I just put this in here. Let's just see if this is going to be profitable. When I after I go through the EV calculations, uh, sorry, you actually might not be able to see this. Uh, when I go through the EV calculations, it'll say whether this is a plus EV or negative EV call for each each hand. So let, let's just do this real quick. Let me just click the EV button. We this does all of its simulations. Okay. So, in general, versus a 24% and 16% three betting range from from the blinds, which again isn't tight, isn't overly aggressive. When you're dealing with with Annie's here, um, six-handed in a nine-man, so we've got a little bit of ICM, but we're not on the bubble. You could see that opening with any two cards is profitable, and a lot of that is profitable based upon the calling range that we put in here. So, actually, the range I put in there, you can see. 
we should probably take out King Queen, King Jack off, King Ten suited. So those are actually negative EV calls. So um, if an opponent is three bet three betting you with roughly this type of range, your calling range shouldn't be much wider than pocket. It's always interesting that pocket fours is you can see here pocket fours is profitable, pocket sixes isn't. It's a little bit weird how that happens. It's mainly because um, you know when they're doing these simulations based upon the ranges that the opponents are capable of getting in, these hands might perform a little bit better. So, but in general here, you're talking ace ten, ace nine suited, pocket sixes, sevens, um, and that's it. And king queen suited. So, when you're opening with, let's say, 12 and a half big blinds, you need to be pretty tight with your calling range. Okay? Now, obviously, this is extremely exploitable. Okay? You're opening with any two cards, but you're only calling with, you know, roughly 12 10 to 12% range. Extremely exploitable, but the question is not whether it's exploitable, but whether they are going to exploit or not. Okay? And for the tighter range here, um, we can actually, again, take out the ace-10, even ace-9 suited. So we should be ace-10 suited, ace-queen off, pocket sixes plus. So I think that's a pretty good average range. So let me stop there real quick. If you knew nothing about your opponents, and you were playing a 9-man game or an 18-man game, um, and you're opening up from the button with, you know, 12, 13 big blinds, and you get 3-bet, I think a, 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 you want to start with a baseline. And that's what I always start with. Start with an average calling range that you're going to have. And that could be, again, pocket 6s, pocket 7s, um, ace-jack plus, maybe ace-10 suited. And uh, if you think a person is more, a little bit more aggressive, maybe add in king-queen suited. But that's about it, guys. Roughly a 9 to 10% range. Uh, because you're again you're dealing with ICM, you're, there's an ICM tax. You need to have a guaranteed equity. Um, and to learn more about the ICM tax in your different games, go to my Bubble Factor video. I talk about it in each game and how, as you're approaching the money in different game types, how that tax affects your guaranteed equity that you need. So without going into that too into too much depth, watch the Bubble Factor video and I get into that and that can justify why. You know, we really can't go too wide with our calling ranges when dealing with, you know, ICM as, as we approach the bubble and approach, you know, in the money. So, I think here, this is a pretty good average range in terms of pocket sixes plus, ace-jack suited, ace-ten suited, ace-queen off. Um, but then now let's get into, like I said, let's, th let's say you know a guy is three-betting you really wide. Okay? So... Two things we want to we want to look at here. One, if a player is three betting us really really wide, one is it still going to be profitable to open up, and two, with what range should we be calling with? How much wider can we deviate from that standard calling range? So let's take our small blind guy who we said is a, is a little bit more aggressive. We have a roughly 24% range. Let's give him all aces. Let's give him, you know, a lot of players like to 3-bet with suited connectors. Let's just give him king-9, 10-9 off, maybe some king-8, jack-8, give him suited hands. So I increased his range, what was I, 24%. We got him to like 37, 38%. You know, whether you think someone's going to be that wide or not. But th look, obviously, this is pretty wide here. Okay, this is pretty wide. So, and then let's say we don't even deviate from our, our range. Um, let's just see if this is going to be profitable. So let's say we don't even know that this guy's going to be this aggressive. We keep our baseline calling range. So if we don't even change our calling range to adjust to the opponent, is it going to be plus EV to even open here? Let's take a look. You can see it dropped a little bit. Um, it went from about 0.8 to 0.3. Still profitable, but as you can see now, there are certain hands that we probably shouldn't be opening up. 
you know, how it determines whether you should open up Ace Eight suited again is based upon the three betting ranges that we assign. And you know, through the hundred thousand simulations it did, apparently Ace Eight suited didn't do as well as the <laughs> three dues off suit. But with that being said, um, you can see that there's some hands that we shouldn't be opening up. But it's still you're still talking what an eighty five ninety percent range here. Um, but we can turn this back into an 82 card open if we adjust our calling range, which I'll do in a second. Um, but I, th I want to point out something here, guys, is that if we give our opponent a 37, close to 40% three betting range with Annie's, it's still going to be profitable to open up. So I want to point this out because what I saw a lot of players do, you know, even a lot of players I'm coaching, staking, is that because they feel they're getting three bet by an aggressive opponent like this, they stop opening hands. Well, if you just completely stop opening, you're missing out on this uh, plus EV play. So what does 0.32% mean? Let's pick a, pick a calculator here. So let's just say you're playing a $15 18-man game, and I know there's rake. Let's just say it's a $15 game. That's how much is in the prize pool. $270 in the pot times that by 0.32% times 0 0.0032. So every time I open here and don't even adjust my calling ranges, I'm going to put 86 cents into my pocket. Okay? So if you are getting paranoid about players 3-betting you, and you just all of a sudden tighten up, and you don't open 3-deuce off here, or you don't open 7-deuce off suit through these regs who aren't going to flat, they're just going to 3-bet you in the post ante stage, you are leaving a lot of money on the table. Now, how can we increase this EV even more? Well, what's, let's say we know that this opponent's really aggressive. How can we change our, our baseline calling range? Um, those hands that were, by the way, those hands that were obviously negative EV before have become positive EV now, or plus EV now. Um, so why don't I do this? You could, we'll be able to see. I'm going to give myself an, an any two card calling range, um, and what this will do is this will show the what hands we can call with and what hands we can't. This is obviously going to be negative EV now if we're going to be calling with any two cards. So you could see here now the hands that we can call with. Um, they're all highlighted. So it's kind of weird that again a six suited, so a fold, but a three suited off. Um, so I wouldn't give I wouldn't be concerned too much with that. We're obviously not going to be doing that. But we can go down to a 7, pocket pairs. I would still be probably comfortable with 5s. A 7 suited, some broadways. And there's our calling range. So we can increase our calling range about 3 to 4%. Um, let's do this calculation again with proper calling ranges. All right, so increased our EV a little bit, not a ton. Um, that I was actually a little bit surprising that it didn't increase it that much. But um, and so this time, let's just take out these real quick. Let's do it one more time. Um, so when you're dealing in these ICM situations, you don't want to go too too wide with your calling range so even if he's he increases his calling or, or uh, opening sorry even if he makes his three betting range about 40 percent we can only increase our calling range about an extra two to three percent from our baseline so the difference between that, that baseline range which we said was probably like ace jack ace queen pocket sixes um, you know ace ten suited we can add in a couple extra hands down to let's say ace eight, ace seven suited, ace eight suited, um, and add in some more Broadway hands. So, accordingly, we could probably look to eliminate opening the um, you know the bottom part of our range, the the worst, the worst of the worst hands. Um, but in general opening is still going to be extremely profitable and you don't want to leave that money on the table. So 
I want to point this out because on one end, if you are dealing with an aggressive opponent, you can still open. Maybe you can fold out the bottom. I would still be opening 80-90% of my hands. You can adjust your calling range a little bit. But when you're dealing with ICM, like, again, this is uh, six-handed and a nine-man, so I, I believe the bubble factor is around 1.5, 1.6. I, I would have to go check that, but roughly in that area, because right on the bubble, it's 1.8. So when you're dealing with that type of ICM tax, you still can't be calling ultra-wide, uh, because you need that guaranteed equity. So we can add in a couple hands, but we can't add in too many hands, because then we're just simply risking our 12 and a half big blind stack with rag aces and broadways that that might not be doing so good so I think that's a very interesting situation there that we can still be extremely exploitable we still can't call very wide even to adjust to an exploitable three betting range but it's still gonna be profitable so I think this is the overriding factor here guys is that just open up if you just open up with the majority of your hands you're going to be making a plus EV play and as long as you're calling with the proper range and not too too wide you're going to be doing just fine because there's nothing that can end a game quicker than calling with too wide of a range you, you can play the perfect game and you get to close to the bubble and you open up and a guy three bets you and you have a 12 big blind stack and you snap him off with pocket fours and then he he flips over ace king or pocket sixes and or whatever and and you're out so nothing can end a game quicker than getting too loose with your calling range so that's why I always say if you're unsure about a a three betting range you definitely want to err on the side of being conservative because opening up and risking two big blinds is one thing risking your entire stack is another so it's going to be an extremely plus EV play to just open up and pick up the pot now one thing I want to do is so at what point does this become negative EV so let's just keep this guy at 40 percent let's say you're dealing with two aggressive opponents and let's just give him um, suited ace all aces let's let's give the big blind like a 30 percent and let's not even change our calling range All right, so it's pretty much right there. So this is pretty right where we come break even. Um, actually, let me. Maybe we should. So if we don't don't adjust your calling range to this wide of an open, it's going to tell you not to even open up the hands. So let's bear with me here as I bounce around a little bit. I'm going to see what the proper calling range is here versus that opponent. Okay, so we should be calling now with you know ace seven suited, ace eight off, some broadways, pocket four. So let's give ourselves that range. Find all the plus EV ones. So we'll you know add in some of these. So we want to increase our range. Let's see how that affects our overall play. And then I'll draw some conclusions to this. Okay, so it makes it a little bit better. But, so, so here's the conclusion after going through all these quick calculations. If you're dealing with one loose opponent to your left that's really aggressive, you can still pretty much open up with any two cards in the post ante stage. If you're dealing with two really aggressive opponents, now I think this is a much more you know of a rare scenario where you have a guy three betting you with 37% and a guy three betting you with 32%, then quite simply you just can't open up with a lot of hands. Um, but the majority of the time what you're going to be dealing with is you're going to be dealing with you know guys that aren't going to be this wide you're going to be dealing with typically one aggressive opponent um, 
I'll just keep it there. You're usually going to have one aggressive opponent, not necessarily two. Um, if you have two, they have to be three betting you with close to 30, you know, between 30 and 40 percent. I still don't think that players are going to do it that often and um, that wide. So before you, let's just say, before you stop opening with your hand, with those hands, you need to be sure that these players, both of them, are extremely, extremely aggressive. Otherwise, you might be missing out on making a plus EV play. Now, on the flip side, um, you also should be adjusting your range as well. Um, if you know that they're very aggressive, you want to add in a couple hands um, to your calling range, because if you don't, then it's going to make it a slightly more negative EV situation, um, because you're simply just not a adjusting, and you're going to be raise folding maybe a little bit too much. But again, as I showed before, you know, if we go, if I just keep going backwards to where we were, um, you know, let's take out these hands. Yep. So what I did was I just went back. I paused real quick. Went back to the original situation that I set up, um, and I'll go back to the EV calculation. Um, I'll let it run here. Yep. So if you remember, this was the uh, the first situation that we set up, um, and I got roughly you know a 33% range for for this guy, about 17% three betting range. This is typically your more standard scenario. And again, what I wanted to point out is we can still be opening with any two cards profitably. Have a standard calling range. Here you can see ace-10, pocket sixes. I, I cleaned it up a little bit. Um, you know, maybe add in king-queen suit potentially. But that's essentially where where you want to be at. Don't think that you have to go crazy with your calling range because even if they're three betting you wide, you don't want to be calling too wide. That opens you up to being extremely exploitable. But remember, they need to do this wide. They need to do it often. And even if they are, it's still plus EV. So for the people that are being a little bit paranoid about it, it's still going to be extremely plus EV to open post ante. So here's the difference, and here's where I'd say. Um, the paranoia can come in handy and force you to tighten up. Let's change the situation and let's say we're at 100, 200 without Annie's. So you can see 0.48% um, is the plus EV post Annie. Let's take out those Annie's. You see it goes all the way down to pretty much a break even play. And you shouldn't even be. You could see how how many hands now are would be a, a negative EV open. So post Annie, what my general rule of thumb would be: go ahead and continue to open with any two cards from the button from the cutoff. You know, and potentially from middle position as well, if the players to your left are tight. Um, but even if you have one player, even two players that you've identified as a little bit more aggressive, you can see from be doing this before how aggressive they actually need to be in the post ante stage for for your play to become negative EV. They need to be three betting you with a 35, 40 percent range to start making your open a negative EV play. Okay, so hopefully, I, I know I kind of bounced around a little bit, did a bunch of calculations here, but hopefully those key points stuck. And that if you're playing an 18 man, I know we did a nine man game here, but a nine man game, an 18 man game, you know, even a six max where you, ha where you have ICM, or any situation, maybe even in, in a 180 man game at the final table, maybe you're playing a three rebuy and you're a little bit deeper, because typically the uh, the bubble factor on a final table of a 180 man is around 1.5. So similar ICM considerations that you actually have um, six-handed here in a nine man. That if you're sitting there with 12, 13 big blinds, post ante, go ahead and open with any two cards. Your calling range should still be pretty tight given the ICM. But even with that wide opening yet tight calling range, 
um, it's still going to be very profitable to open against the majority of opponents. Okay? And obviously the deeper you are, as you get to 14, 15, 16 big blinds, yes, you can continue to open, but quite simply, you can't call as wide um, just because you're giving up way too much equity. So your range, as we, you know, we had before here, we showed ace-10, ace-8 suited, pocket sixes. That range would probably go to more like ace-queen, ace-10 suited, pocket eights. So you would have to eliminate. So it's like I said before, it's important to get that baseline of... If you have, let's say, 12, 13 big blinds, you raise, you get 3-bet, I'm going to call with ace-jack and pocket 7s, or ace-8 and pocket 7s, something like that. Um, that's a good standard range versus a 3-bet a, uh, a from the blinds. And if you notice the guy's ultra-tight, then just tighten up. But it's important to know how to adjust from that range. Um, if you're dealing with more aggressive players, add in a, a few extra hands. Pocket 6s, ace-10 off, ace-8 suited. So that's... Uh, you know, that's how you want to adjust. So you don't, don't go too, too wide, but you want to definitely uh, open up a little bit with your calling range. Um, so let me go back to here. So as I said, just to, to kind of recap, it's still going to be profitable to open up any two cards in the post-ante stage, even versus two players who will three-bet approximately about 30%. You know, when they both start to get to 35 40%, that's when it's going to be you know, negative EV. Pre-ante, though... If you have these aggressive players, you're going to need to tighten up um, because there's not as much value. You're going to be race folding too much to justify, um, you know, just quite simply opening up. The, the pot isn't as big to justify opening up. So pre-ante, just go ahead and open up probably your, your good hands, your broadways, still your aces, your pocket pairs, maybe some good suited connectors, but not any two cards. Um, and... When dealing with ICM, like I said, your calling range is rarely going to get too, too wide. You know, the further away from the, you are from the bubble, you can call slightly wider. The closer you get to the bubble, you're going to need to tighten up with those calling ranges as you need the guaranteed equity as justified, you know, by the bubble factor, you know, in, in the bubble factor video that I did. So, you need to ask yourself as well, when you're, if you think that players are going to be three-betting you really, really wide, um... Are they exploiting you, or are they exploiting the situation? So, for example, let's say you're on the bubble of a 6-max game, a 9-man, an 18-man, or a 45-man, uh, where the bubble is extremely important, um, that being in the 45-man game. And let's say you're second in chips, and a reg to your left has you covered, and he's a chip leader. And and you open for a raise. Well, that reg should be 3-betting you with any two cards, pretty much, especially if there's a short stack. Because, quite simply, in a high ICM situation like that, he knows that you can't call without, uh, or any wider than pocket queens or pocket kings. Um, but he's not exploiting you. He's exploiting the ICM situation, regardless of, uh, of who you are. So, don't mix what we just described with high ICM scenarios. Um, you, we're trying to identify players that are specifically exploiting you because they see that you're opening up wide. So know the situation. In high ICM scenarios, by the way, you typically need to resort to more like unexploitable push fold mode because raise calling could be an, an ICM mess. Um, so that's something to be careful about. But without getting into too much of the, the ICM there, um, I wanted to show those calculations for for those players out there that are concerned about getting three bet. You could still open, you know, in that post ante stage, still open pretty wide. So, as I, if you remember what I mentioned before, you know, how do we know what a player's range is? That's the first question you ask. You know, what's this guy three betting me with? Is he tight? Is he aggressive? Is he three betting me wider than everybody else? So, there's a few things we can do. First is look at the three bet versus steel stat um, by the position. So, have the three bet versus steel stat in your HUD. Look at you know look, pop, uh, roll over the HUD so you the pop up um, shows the stats by position and look you know is he three betting fifteen to twenty percent um, and it doesn't mean that necessarily a fifteen to twenty percent range that means a fifteen to twenty percent frequency um, so please don't get those two confused um, you know a guy with a ten percent three bet stat um, is capable potentially of three betting with a uh, twenty to thirty percent 
actual range. It just means in the total frequency that, that he does it. So it's more situation dependent as well. Um, also take note of frequency of 3-bets. So even if you never see a player show down their hand, you know, if you see him 3-bet 2, 3, 4 times within you know, 10 hands, I think you can get a good idea that his 3-betting range might be wider than, than, the, uh, than the baseline. Um, or than your basic 3-betting range. So again, that's something to take note of. Look for any sizing clues as well. Now we didn't get into 4-betting here, but um, I'll give a quick example. You know, I used to play against an opponent all the time uh, who was a solid reg who, when he was trying to exploit me or exploit other regs, he would 3-bet small when we were deeper, say like 15, 16 big blinds. He would 3-bet small essentially as a bluff. Um, he would do like a min 3-bet. And if he had a hand, though, he would go bigger or 3-bet shove all in. So it became pretty obvious. He was actually still a very good player, but that's something you can take note of and you can, uh, accordingly, you can know if there, his 3-betting range is weak or, or more of a value hand. So take note of any sizing clues. Um, and the next thing I would say is definitely do this. Use your database to filter out hands versus regs that you're seeing every day. I mean, especially for you 18-man guys, you 9-man players um, that are playing at the same table with the same regs every single day the less guessing you have to do about their range, the better. Obviously the stats can help, but as I said before, wouldn't it be better to actually know exactly what hands they've 3-bet you with or 3-bet other opponents with? Or um, seeing the exact sizing that they do? Well, yes, you might be able to do that at the table, but if you're playing 12, 14, 16 tables plus, that can be really hard to take note of. Use your database to filter out these spots. So let me show you Let me show you a quick filter that you can put into play. So go into go into your hands, go to filter. Um, I already loaded it in. So pick your game type. I'll just put two to any. But if you're playing 18 man games and you just want your 18 man games, um, you know just put in 18 to 18. Um, number of players. Typically I'll go more than three players because I don't really want heads up play. Um, that's obviously totally different. So and you know, heads up play more than nine big blinds. You know, I don't really want to see a short stack situation. That's not what I'm interested in. Um, we can you can filter by position. I'll just leave it as um, any position right now. And the preflop action facing the player is let's just, let's just let's just say one razor. Okay, so you could put in one razor, more filters, and three bet equals true. Okay. So let's I already save that. Um, and then the next step, don't necessarily do this for your hands. Do it for Reg's hands. So, you know, there, there's a player that I would see all the time. Like, I'm, I'm playing on uh, Intertops right now on the Revolution Network. And the, f the first name that came to mind was this Optimus Prime guy. He, he plays a lot. I've seen him a lot. Um, so what you do is make a list of the regs that you're playing against every single day and f and uh, look up their hands for this filtered situation so now you're gonna get now what you can do is go replay all hands and you can see now you know obviously I'm, I'm in the hand but I'm not involved um, p3 bets you know, 3x from early position you know, here we go, he flips over queens. Okay, so maybe a standard situation. That That's not the point. The point is, what you can do now is right-click, uh, at least in Hold a Manager, if you, if you have Poker Track, you may have to do something else, and I can export all hands to hard drive, and when I do that, it'll create a text file that I could put on my desktop and load into my Universal Replayer, and I can literally have text files of hands of, of all the three betting situations that um, a, a particular th uh, reg was involved with. So this, like I said, this is a great thing to do. You can just take one day after your games or just take one day. Do this for you know the top five or ten regs you see all the time 
um, filter out the hands for the three betting spots or three or or even just all in spots. You could do it for anything. Since we're talking about three betting, that's what we're we're gonna do. Um, and start taking notes. And then once you see, hey, maybe th- look, this guy three bet me with nine ten offsuit or or uh, three bet somebody else. You know, you could start getting specific information and go ahead and plug that into your uh, into your notes on that player. So definitely do that to start getting an idea and. and and I emphasize understanding what your opponent's three betting range is for two reasons. As I said, one is nothing can end a game quicker if you're calling it all in without the proper range. So maybe you think a guy is more aggressive, but maybe he really isn't, and you start calling him wider than you should. Okay? So you need to know for a fact. And on the flip side, if you are being a bit paranoid that players are three betting you nonstop, well, let's take a look. Let's see what they're actually three betting you with. Let's see what the frequency is. You know, let's see what they're actually doing. Um, and this will help you either justify or refute the fact that they you might be getting three bet, um, you know, by a wide range. Um, so I think it's very important that before you start really changing up your game and tightening up, that you be damn sure that players are ultra ultra aggressive and I, and as I showed already even if they are we can uh we could still be opening up wide uh versus them in the post ante stage um, so let's go back to this so that's the conclusion of part 1 um, so again recap post ante still going to be profitable to open up potentially with any two cards from those late positions if you're dealing with one aggressive opponent even two as long as two aggressive opponents aren't three betting with like a 40% range. Um, Pre-ante, you might need to look to tighten up versus these aggressive opponents because there's just, just simply not going to be as much value in stealing without those antis. When dealing with the ICM scenarios, calling ranges, you're still not going to get too wide, even versus a wide three betting range. Because of the bubble factor, because of the ICM tax, you need guaranteed equity to, to call in these situations. And even if somebody is three betting you really wide, Calling off with hands like ace deuce is still not going to typically justify um, the equity needed, even if the guy is three betting you with nine ten offsuit. So now use that situation. Now we, we talked about when somebody else three bets us. Re- reverse the scenario, guys. Think about what we just went through and how t- tight we need to be calling, even versus why three betting ranges when dealing with ICM. Use that to your advantage when dealing with regs who maybe you've identified as opening up wide. You can three bet them wide and they cannot be calling wide. So that's just kind of a, a little tip to you know use what we know about uh, how we should be handling dealing with the three bet in three betting yourself versus the other regs. Um, and again, if you're unsure about ranges, you know we're never going to be a hundred percent sure about what an opponent's range is. Um, that's obviously why they call it they call it a range. But if you uh, you're never going to be 100 percent sure, so before you start maybe thinking that somebody's three betting you really wide, um, you need to be obviously I said you need to be sure they are. And if you're not sure, err on the side of being conservative. Um, you want to continue to open wide, um, but again, you might want to be conservative. And if you're unsure, the last thing you want to do is call too too wide. But if you really want to um, you know, further the profitability of your opens to allow you to continue to open, you will need to nail down your proper calling ranges so that if you do identify somebody that is three betting you with um, you know, a, a 30 or 40 percent range, you need to know that, okay, to properly call here, I need to now include ace eight suited. I need to include ace ten off. I need, need to include pocket sixes and king queen suited. Okay, so you need, might need to add in an extra four or five hands to increase the value of your open and allow you to continue to open. Okay, so what, uh, like I said, what's coming up in part two that I'm going to do? More hand history examples. I know I got into one. I was kind of jumping around a little bit, um, but I thought that situation illustrated when dealing with ICM that we can still open wide, and but how tight potentially our calling ranges need to be, and how wide someone needs to be to actually cause you to lose money in these games um, 
but I'm going to get into more examples. Go through different game types. Six max, nine man, 18 mans. Look at chip EV situations for the 180 mans. Um, obviously, ranges are going to be much different there compared to ICM. So that's what's going to be coming up in part two, guys. Um, hopefully, you know, if you're one of those players out there that's been a little bit paranoid about players three betting you since you've adapted some of these really aggressive strategies, first I would say, you know, calm your fears. Um, players one probably aren't three betting you as wide as they th as you think they are. Even if they are, it's still going to be profitable to open. Just adjust your calling ranges a little bit. Um, pre ante, yeah, you might want to scale it back a little bit. And um, but before you start making any drastic changes to your game, you want to know if players are capable of three betting you wide. So filter your database, take notes, um, and find out as much information about that player as you can, so that you do a, as little amount of guessing as possible. So hopefully you liked this video. Looking forward to part two, and um, good luck at the tables.